Now what you can see during the scan is that the middle opening of this uh, capture unit projects a light pattern onto your part and the cameras on the left and right hand side, they capture the object with the distorted light pattern, thereby being able to triangulate the part surface. Now, I have two different models that I want to scan with you today because there are two different scan modes that the Einscan SE actually offers. I start a new project and now we have the selection between a texture scan and a non-texture scan. What is the difference? Well, texture is the color, the surface of the model, and you can either choose to have that color or not. A color scan will take a little longer, but well, you'll have color. We'll start off with a non-texture scan uh, to begin with. So I click apply, and now it will launch my scan menu. What I have today is this little green bunny rabbit that is also 3D printed, and I want to scan it because, well, that's what we're here for. So I'm gonna position it right in the center of the plate, and then I can have a, uh, adjust a couple of the settings. For example, I can adjust the brightness. Um, I do not want the model to be red, then it is overexposed, instead this looks pretty good. I can decide whether to align the model by features or by the turntable rotation. I can choose uh, to turn on or off an HDR setting, and I can decide how many steps the turntable should make on its uh, 360 degree rotation. As you can see, I can choose between eight and 36 steps. With eight steps, each step will be 45 degrees rotation. With, 306, uh, with 36 uh, steps, it'll be 10 degrees per rotation. I'll keep it on 12 here. I found that to be a nice middle ground to capture a lot of details of this model um, while not taking forever. Obviously, each step takes scanning time and you'll be able to see how long this actually takes. So I'm going to press the start button. It'll start scanning. And before it actually does this, uh, it verifies the scan with three mini rotations and different pictures. You can already see what happens during a scan. First, there are very thin lines projected onto the model, then slightly thicker ones, then even thicker bars. And each time the two cameras pick up the distorted uh, shadows and the distorted lines on the object and thereby triangulate the surface of your model. So I'm just going to be right back while this thing finishes scanning and then we can see what the result actually is. So our first scan of this model is done. It made a 360 degrees rotation, and this is the model that the scanner came up with. Now, as we can see, there's still a couple of holes in it. It is far from perfect. So what we're gonna do is, this is gonna be the first step. Now, I'm gonna place the bunny rabbit on its side like this, and I'll just initiate another scan. You can see there's a little writing on the bottom, Zortrax, because that's the type of printer we uh, printed this rabbit with. And what's interesting is that writing is in black and black colors are something that 3D scanners do not handle well. So you'll already be able to see the limitations of this scanner right here. It'll have difficulty picking up the black areas and instead will most likely simply make them a hole. It'll just say there's nothing there. It was black. I couldn't see it. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to let it scan again and then be right back. Once again, our scan is done, and what we can see now is that we have covered a couple of areas that we couldn't see before. Obviously, the top was not very easily seen by the scanner, so there's lots of holes there. And as I mentioned, the writing on the bottom that was in black is completely just, well, it's a hole. 
Now, what if I wanted to scan a part that is completely black? Say, this little part right here, it is just out of black plastic. Well, two basic options. Either you get an expensive laser scanner that can scan black surfaces, or you get something called a scanning spray. There are different types of these. They're basically liquid chalk that you can spray onto your object. Now, there are some that are permanent, such as this one. Your part will just stay white until you clean it. Or this one right here is self-dissolving. So after about four hours, your part will simply be black again. But for the scanning process, it'll be nice and white. Here, I can show this real quick. I'll just take it, I'll spray it a bit. And that'll make the uh, surface nice and white, easy to pick up for your scanner. Uh, if I let it dry a bit, it'll be a uniform nice white, as if I had just painted it with white chalk. Right, on with our rabbit though. In Germany, we have a saying, all good things come in threes. So I'm just going to flip it over onto the other side and let it scan one last time on this angle as well. What we can see though, I just accepted the second scan the way it was. And what the software is now doing, it's already aligning the two different scans into one. So what we can see is that it has now aligned our two scans, despite me flipping the rabbit on its side, the software knows due to the geometrical features of this model, how to place the two models relative to another in order to achieve the best result. So now I already have an almost complete rabbit. As I said, one last scan, I'm going to press the play button again, and then we are done with this one. We've got our beautiful third scan and at this point I would say we are ready to just complete the model. Once again, click the little check mark to accept the uh, scan result. And now the software will once, once again align my current scan with the model that I've already had before. So all three models should now be one and most of the holes should now be covered up. We can see at the top there are no more holes, some still around the ears and most notably the one in the bottom where it said Zortrax. Now, if this alignment mode for some reason should fail, there's another button here on the side called align, and this would let you uh, manually select project groups that you do want to align with one another. In our case though, it worked fine. So what we're gonna do now is go into the global optimization. That is just something the software does on its own, thereby optimizing your point cloud. I am happy with this result. And now this is all basically uh, one continuous mesh, one big model. And now I can create an actual 3D mesh out of this. And once again, I have two basic choices, either a watertight or an unwatertight model. What's the difference? Well, the watertight model does not have any holes. So the software will calculate uh, each of these holes closed, whereas the unwatertight model, it'll basically just be what we have just seen. Now, for demonstration purposes, and because it's a bit more interesting, if you wanted to 3D print something, you would always choose this, the watertight model. However, if you want to use the scanned data in a CAD program uh, software to then model another thing around your 3D scan, the unwatertight model might just be your go-to. This entirely depends on your application, so I cannot make a generalized recommendation. So watertight model, the medium detail is entirely sufficient for our purposes here. Uh, the more detail, the longer the calculation time obviously is. So I'm going to let the computer calculate real quick and be right back. Now, what you might have been able to see here is that it actually takes quite a long time. This is due to one of the restrictions 3D scanning actually has. It's very computer power intensive. Um, however, especially for this scanner, the main drawback is it just takes a little longer. I could run the scan on a fairly weak laptop and all it would cost me is a little bit of extra time. 
depending on what I have more, the extra money for a bigger computer or the extra time to just wait a bit longer, this might be a perfectly acceptable trade-off. Once again, this entirely depends on your specific use case. Now, if we look at our model, we can see that the surface is actually really nice. I'm very surprised every time I use the scanner how good the results actually are. And we can see that the holes that were in the ears were closed in a way that I cannot spot them anymore. I can actually not tell what areas were scanned and which areas were calculated. However, where I can tell is on the other side, underside, where there is that writing. So here you can see how these holes are generally filled and often they will look a considerable amount smoother than the surrounding surface. However, this is entirely sufficient for my purposes. I am completely happy with this model and can now export it, save it as an STL, OBJ, or any other file that the software supports. That button is right there, save your scan. And uh, there's also one share your scan where you upload it. You can uh, use this directly in third party software that is, uh, you know, uh, has a partnership with Shining 3D. And then there are a couple of other improvement options such as sharpening, simplifying, or smoothing your 3D scan. I will not be doing any of those today. Instead, we are gonna save this into my test folder. Um, and then we are done with the bunny rabbit. <laughs>